you again by Raven Tia Maurice. The mouth of the cave loomed ahead at least twice my height and wider than my arms could stretch. Normally I would turn away, but I needed the coin. When deciding to hire me, the magistrate had mentioned past the glob of tobacco he chewed. Quite the stash to score, as though I were only tempted by riches. With a dismissive snort, the magistrate added, it should be easy for a former red cloak like you. Clearly he'd never fought a troll. Behind me, I recognized the sound of gravel crunching underfoot and branches snap. A creak of leather followed by a chink of metal. Sounds of someone, not something, creeping up behind me rather than trying to inch its way forward from the darkness ahead. Fingers on the hilt of my sword, I whipped around, drawing my blade. You again, I stared down the length of an all too familiar longsword, eventually connecting with a pair of bright blue eyes fixed intently on me. He chuckled as we made eye contact, lowering his weapon. Keep popping up like this and I might think you're following me. He approached, his eyes on the mouth of the cave for signs of movement. Since when did the red cloaks take an interest in local monster issues? I looked away, my feet shifting back and forth, blades still drawn but lowered. In my defense, he still carried his weapon. They don't. You're disobeying orders? I've parted ways with the red cloaks sheathed my sword, avoiding eye contact with him. Finally taking my advice? They're corrupt to their core, like a rotten apple. They're not what I believe them to be. He sheathed his sword and stood shoulder to shoulder with me, eyes turned towards the cave. What do you say we do this together? Split the bounty. Why, Lord Greythorn, are you proposing we become partners? He held out a leather-clad hand. Although he didn't smile, his beautiful blue eyes twinkled with mischief. For now, then we'll see how it goes. I suspect we will have competition. We have a better chance of su chance succeeding together. I shrugged. That's all right with me, but are you sure you can keep up? Punching him in the shoulder with a laugh, I started walking into the cave. I crept along in the darkness, keeping close to the cave walls. The wide cave mouth gave off a fair amount of light, helping guide us along, although we kept in the shadows. He always stayed within arm's reach. Not that I needed him, but I enjoyed his company. Sure, he was handsome and charming, but he could hold his own in a fight and knew how to use his sword. No pun intended. And his sword had prominence. Called Saving Grace, the magical sword was used to slay the witchling almost that almost destroyed the planet, if you were the type who believed in legends. Hand on hilt, ears perked for sound, eyes adjusting to the growing darkness, I whispered, You never told me how you came into possession of a sword with such history. A rumbling echoed ahead of us. We both stopped. His arm encircled my waist and pulled me to him as he flung, up, flung us up against the wall. I didn't stop him. Keeping alive was a high priority. We, we kept still and silent as we waited, listening, watching. Nothing. With the coast momentarily clear, I exhaled in relief. His breath on my neck made my skin tingle. Perhaps it was the looming potential danger, that moment of dire possibility, or his arm still around my waist, but I found myself smiling, leaning into him, his chest plate cold and firm against my back. Turning my hand so our cheeks touched, I raised my hand to stroke the stop soft stubble on his jawline. My eyes closed for a brief moment, remembering past thoughts of passion with this man. Sebastian Lamond, Lord Greythorn, was good, honorable, and loyal. I wasn't any of those things. Yet. But I wanted to be. Would he ever want someone like me? I could hope. Shall we pretend death approaches and make love against the wall? He asked in my ear, the soft hairs of his stubble tickling my cheek. Have we got time? We stood together as the rumbling continued. My hand went to my small crossbow I kept strapped to my hip. I knew, even though I couldn't see, his other hand was on the hilt of the sword. Remember, trolls can smell your fear, he whispered. I'm not afraid. I pulled away from him, but held tightly to his hand as we continued to walk forward. Losing track of him in the darkness seemed foolish, and it also gave me an excuse to keep hold of his hand. I'm assuming fear sweat smells differently, or trolls possess some magical ability. I snorted. In my experience, trolls are not magical. 
Something farther into the cave heard me and copied the sound, its much louder snort echoing off the walls. He laughed. With him beside, behind me, I could not see the smile that accompanied the laugh, but the thought of it was enough to spread warmth through my chest. A loud bang from outside the cave startled us both. We turned in tandem to face the entrance, far enough away that we were shielded by darkness, but not enough that we needed to light a torch to see clearly there were no signs of anyone else. Catching a glimpse of light, I noticed a tunnel just to the left of where we came in. Having to battle other hunters on top of a troll didn't appeal to me one bit. Before I could say anything to Sebastian, we heard another bang, this time from further inside the cave. Too late, we realized the troll heard the same sound we did. From a ways deeper into the dark, heavy footsteps thundered, shaking the world around us as a ten-foot ten foot tall troll came running out of the black, ready to protect its home. I almost felt guilty for hunting it. Almost. Then remembered its favorite snack was the femurs of young children. Do we wait or do we follow? I asked Sebastian. If you want to collect the bounty, we must return with evidence, he said. Evidence of the body part's nature. Head, feet, teeth, hands. Any or all. I sighed. They wouldn't simply trust you with your word. I figured Lord Greythorn carried a certain amount of... What's the word I'm looking for? Oddly enough, no. He drew his sword from its sheath. Uttering a few words beneath his breath, the blade radiated blue, infusing with magical energy. It cast a small glow of light around us, giving his face an eerie glow. I gestured towards the split in the cave ahead as I drew my crossbow. You go right, I'll go left. He nodded, his eyes already on the right side. I didn't mention that I wanted to avoid bumping into any red cloaks unprepared, so I was being cautious. I hesitated, wanting to say more. But what was there to say? Wish him luck? Beg him to stay with me? Another offer of a quick romp? For all I knew, this could be the last time I saw him, although I had more faith in both our abilities than to let fear shake my resolve. Swallowing against all the things I wished I could say to him, and all the things... I doubted he wanted me to say. I turned towards the smaller tunnel on the left. As I stepped forward, his hand caught my arm. Wait, he commanded. My heart leapt into my chest, assuming it was another instinctual move, an act of protection. Then he pulled me to him, releasing my arm. He captured my waist again, this time to pull me against his chest. Be careful, Ashlyn, he said, then bowed his head low to kiss me. Eyes wide, a gurgle of surprise in the back of my throat. It took the tightening of his arm about me to realize what was happening. My only regret was having only one free hand to snake around his neck as I welcomed the embrace. Hope. A sign he felt as I did. A sign we were meant for greater things. All that fear and indecision washed away with one perfect kiss. He released me, our eyes locking on each other, with a wordless squeeze of my hand he conveyed his earlier sentiment. You too, Sebastian. Clearing my thoughts of Sebastian, I started down the tunnel, left, watching and listening. Darkness closed around me, but I continued to push forward, trying to keep a steady pace, despite not being able to see anything except the exit. Noises echoed ahead. I followed the sound. A scuffle? The tunnel lightened as it curved, and before I'd taken a hundred steps... I spied the forest ahead, a second entrance to the cave. Either I'd taken the wrong tunnel and Sebastian was now fighting the troll on his own, or pushing my way through a large bush blocking the entrance, the forest floor came into view. I blanched. Remnants of body parts littered the ground. Blood sprayed around like a rainfall. Human parts. The earth shook. I wrinkled my nose at troll stench. Lo and behold, there it stood to the right of the cave mouth, surveying its handiwork, having quickly dispatched whoever crossed its path before me. With no time to inspect debris, I silently prayed it wasn't Sebastian. Gnashing its broken teeth, fiddled dripping from its maw, the troll roared. I almost stumbled back, deafened. Silently thanked a deity I didn't quite believe in that I wasn't wearing red. Trolls, like several other monsters, hated the color red. I'd learned the hard way a few times. Smirking, I called out, Hey, big boy, want to make all this real easy? The ground shook as it ran at me. I shot a bolt 
from my crossbow and hit him in the left eye. With a deafening scream, it stumbled. Saving grace glinted in my peripheral. With deft skill, Sebastian swung his blade, striking the troll's leg. Blood sprang around it. The troll yipped and yowled in pain, grabbing small trees, yanking them out of the ground, and pelting them in the direction of me and Sebastian. Looks like we pissed it off, but then I'd be angry too if a puny human shot out my eye with an arrow. Sebastian dodged. First an uprooted tree, then a shower of bits of rock. I reached for a new bolt to reload. The troll snarled, spittle flying, its putrid smell wafted towards me, and I stopped myself from gagging. My hand stalled when I saw the troll's mitt grapple a boulder, watching the ground split as it yanked it free. Bolt in one hand, crossbow in the other, I darted forward. Zigzag one way, then the other, must be a challenging target for the troll turned cyclops. Ducking behind a tree, I reloaded. Squeak as the bow stretched. Click as the bolt locked. Thunk as my body yanked against the tree trunk. Around my waist was not the warm embrace of Sebastian's protective arm, but the gnarled hand of the troll. A scream died in my throat as the hand wrenched me free. My crossbow slipped and clattered to the ground below. The world spun, the hand squeezed. My lungs flamed and my limbs creaked as the hand tightened its hold. Any tighter and the bones in my arms would snap like twigs. Red clouded my vision as the troll shook me. With my dying breath, I yelled, Little help! A rib popped, then another. Fire irons of pure pain. My screams like forced squeaks as I gasped for air. Now or never. My cry for help must not have been heard. Sebastian was not coming to my rescue. Now or never. Wiggling my fingers, I worked to free my arms, ignored the fear of dislocation, and fought for my life. One hand free, then another. As the world spun and another fire iron stabbed, I drew the dagger I kept sheathed on my left wrist. I stabbed the small blade in at each of its finger joints, hoping the pain would help loosen its grip. Maybe, just maybe. A glint of the sun hitting metal caused me to squint, and saving grace came swooping down and struck the troll in his shoulder. I only caught a glimpse of Sebastian's face as the troll yowled in pain and tossed me to the side, discarded. The world spun and spun as I flew up and through the air before slamming hard into a tree. The wind knocked out of me when I slid down and hit the ground. The loud crack I heard hopefully wasn't my spine. When my face hit the dirt, light exploded in my eyes and the world didn't stop its gut-wrenching spin before everything went black. There was movement around me before the world came back into view. Rustling, thumping, slicing, and a blood-curdling howl as Sebastian Lamond, Lord Greythorn, dispatched the troll with his magical legendary blade saving grace. Surely the bards would sing about this one. The world came back into view and his familiar face appeared above me. Did we get him? My grizzly voice asked. I sounded like I'd been smoking a dwarf pipe. Sebastian laughed. Yeah, we got him. When you say we, you mean me, right? I consider the crossbow bolt in the eye what turned the battle in our favor. And my back isn't broken. I take that as a win. Sebastian chuckled as I tried to sit up. I suppose you helped a little. Before I could protest, he pulled me onto his lap. Once we collect our bounty, we will go home so you can heal. He examined my expression. We'll pick up your gear, too. Home? Graythorn Manor. Home. His face went a little pink with blush. You did mention something about partners. I figured it's as good a place as any to have his home base. Or do you have your eye on... Shh. I stretched my arm up, grabbing the front of his chest plate, as if I grabbed his collar and pulled him close so I could kiss him. His long blonde hair must have come undone during the fight as it fell around his face, framing it perfectly. I thought you'd never ask. 